On the evening of the 29th of September 1913, a 55-year-old man boarded the SS Dresden steamship in Antwerp, Belgium, bound for London. He took dinner on board the ship and then retired to his cabin at around 10pm, leaving word to be called the next morning at 6.15am. But in the morning, his cabin was empty and his bed had not been slept in, although his nightshirt was neatly laid out and his watch had been left where it could be seen from the bed. His hat and his neatly folded overcoat were discovered beneath the after-deck railing. That man was never seen alive again. That man was Rudolf Diesel, inventor of the engine that still bears his name to this day. The circumstances of his disappearance were mysterious, to say the least. The New York Times headlines chronicle a strange story that grew stranger with each passing day. On the 1st of October, the headline read, Dr. Diesel vanishes from a steamship. The following day, the headline was no ray of light on Diesel mystery. German inventor was a millionaire and his home was happy. Friends and family were flummoxed. They speculated that he'd fallen overboard, arguing that his frequent insomnia might have made him pace the deck when everyone else was asleep. But by the 13th of October, the mood of those headlines changed. Diesel family in straits. Missing inventor said to have left them in extreme need. Two days later, the headline read, Diesel was bankrupt. He owes $375,000 with tangible assets of only around $10,000. Suicide motivated by financial troubles soon became the accepted explanation. According to an article in Time magazine published almost 30 years after his disappearance, Diesel had long been plagued by health woes and money troubles. He was, the article said, a better inventor than investor. But that story questioned suicide as an explanation for his disappearance, arguing that in 1913 things were going fairly well. And it noted ominously, no note, no clue, no trace of his body was ever found. Adding to the mystery still further, that last statement is actually up for debate. Ten days after the disappearance, the crew of a Dutch pilot boat came upon the corpse of a man floating at the mouth of a Dutch river. The body was in such an advanced state of decomposition that it was unrecognisable, and they didn't bring it aboard because of heavy weather. Instead, the crew retrieved personal items including a pill case, wallet, ID card, pocket knife and an eyeglass case from the clothing of the dead man, and then returned the body to the sea. Those items were subsequently identified by Diesel's son as having belonged to his father. Of course, conspiracy theories abounded. One was that Diesel was snuffed out by the German Secret Service because the diesel engine played an instrumental part in the development of the U-boat and they didn't want him to share his secrets with the British. Others suspected rival inventors or business competitors. While there was never an official investigation into Diesel's disappearance, its strangeness and his celebrity kept the case in the public eye, and a few tantalising details eventually emerged. One was that just before he left, Diesel had given his wife a bag and told her not to open it until the following week. It contained 20,000 German marks, along with financial statements that revealed the true depths of the family's debt. An even more persuasive piece of evidence was found in his notebook, where he had pencilled a small cross next to the date 29th of September, possibly indicating the date of his death. Of course, the engine named after its inventor would go on to shape the world. It's been the power source of every notable piece of demolition and construction equipment in living memory. But there is a possible and belated twist in this tale. In a book titled Diesel Engines for Land and Marine Work, Diesel said that in 1900 a small diesel engine was exhibited by the Otto Company, which on the suggestion of the French government was run on peanut oil. The motor was built for ordinary oils and without any modification was run successfully on vegetable oil. I have recently repeated these experiments on a large scale with full success and entire confirmation of the results formerly obtained. So, did Rudolf Diesel die by his own hand? Was he killed by German spies to prevent him sharing his secrets with the British? Or was he, in fact, killed by dark forces from within the oil industry who saw the threat of vegetable and peanut oil? We will never know. All we do know is that Rudolf Diesel was ahead of his time. 
And even as his invention nears the end of its useful life in demolition and construction circles, he saw the possibilities of vegetable oil a good 120 years before the rest of us. <laughs>